thank you to Crest. You uh, are the only game in town from my standpoint when it comes to a collaborative group of people who come together with, I think, the responsible approach to the energy and climate challenges that we face. It is nice to be in a room with people who understand that the earth is warming and that humans contribute to that warming, who don't want to entirely sacrifice the American economy on the altar of virtue signaling. I have to share with you, it was so disappointing just yesterday to see people engage in what was, I think, pretty destructive politics and dialogue around an issue that we need to work together on. Rather than stand in the middle of the road waving signs for bills that will never become law, it would be nice if folks on the far left would join us in actually coming to the floor of the Congress with the type of solutions that many of my colleagues and I have introduced. When the far left takes the position that it's the Green New Deal or bust, we exclude ourselves from, I think, the broad center in this country where we can embrace legislation like that I've introduced with Representative Peters to go after super pollutants that cause way more harm to our environment and contribute to war more, more warming than carbon dioxide. As we gather today, our polar ice caps are melting, but yet Washington remains frozen because the Democrats who are in charge of the House are unwilling to move reasonable climate bills that embrace American innovation, that understand the challenges that we face with other global polluters who will not model an, an economically oppressive regulatory scheme, but who may model the types of innovations that we think can unlock potential and can reduce global emissions. So again, Thank you to Cress for providing the intellectual heft behind the reasonable arguments that we're making. And I would call on my colleagues on the far left of the political spectrum to please embrace the notion of some progress. Let us move bills that have Republican and Democrat support. And when we do that, when we get a little momentum, when we tackle super pollutants, when we institute better protections for American innovators, when we improve the electric grid, when we have a more inclusive energy doctrine to embrace nuclear and hydropower and wind and solar, it is my belief that we can build more momentum than all of the divisive politics that we've seen around climate in Washington, D.C. I know that many in the country were moved watching a 16-year-old girl say, how dare you, to world leaders who I don't think are appropriately responding to the challenges of climate change. But my call to my Democrat colleagues would be, how dare you remain silent? How dare you refuse to save time on the floor of the Congress for us to be able to move these responsible bills that Cress has done such a phenomenal job of curating and advancing. So thank you for your great work, and it's my hope that we've got more progress ahead of us that we're able to achieve.